Assalamualaikum and uh, welcome back to my channel. Um, what we're going to do today is we're going to discuss another question which relates to uh, MFRS uh, 15. MFRS 15 is uh, equivalent to IFRS 15 which is on revenue from contract with customer. And I'll focus on today's discussion is uh, to focus on the issue on performance obligation. So let's look at the first question here. Question A. Define the term performance obligation and state the criteria which should be met if goods or services promised to a customer are to be considered as distinct. So there are two things that you need to do here. One is to define and the second thing is to state the criteria to state the criteria uh, of whether or not the goods or services can be considered as distinct distinct means a separate performance obligation or is it a multiple performance obligation um, or maybe it is just one performance obligation so that one. So let's look at what we have here, and the uh, what you have here is in accordance with what is provided under uh, MFRS uh, 15, MFRS 15, where the definition for MFRS 15 performance obligation. The key word is is a promise, not any promise, but the promise that is in the contract. Yeah, either the contract is written, implied, or as uh, a part of the customary business practice and the contract is to transfer to the customer not to other parties but to the customer either what is being transferred is either the goods or services yeah, or either a bundle of goods or services which is distinct or if you look at the MFRS or that can also involve a series of distinct goods of services that are substantially the same and it has the similar or same pattern of transfer to the customer. So that means these are the two criteria. Performance obligation, the definition is at the first part here and the, the definition here is divided into, further divided into two more uh, sub uh, explanation. The second part now, right, your second part. The second part is on the part to state the criteria, the criteria, the criteria of whether the goods and services promised are distinct. So let's look at the part here. So what are the criteria? I think you can recall from the lecture that you may have attended, right? You may have attended the lecture, so you may have uh, noticed that. A good or service is regarded as distinct if both of these criteria are being met. So it cannot be just one of it, it must be both. So the customer where that Criteria one of it is that the customer can benefit from the goods and services or service, sorry, either on its own or together with other resources that are readily available. So you can still benefit without the other performance obligation, right? If let's say that is the case, uh, there are several goods or services that are being sold off or being offered to the customer if you can still benefit from that individual um, goods or service without the other resources that is considered as distinct. The second one is the entity's promise to transfer goods or service is also separately identifiable from other promises in the contract. So this um, um, so called criteria is best illustrated if we can have that in a scenario based question. So the question that follows here, there are two more questions here is question 
B and question C, if you can see here. Henny Manny has entered into a contract with Bob the Builder for construction of a residential project. So that is a contract to um, perhaps uh, involving in a housing project uh, where this, that is for the residents uh, in a particular area. That includes supply of construction material. So that is what is included in the contract that you um, having a contract with Bob the Builder right, to supply the construction material, architectural service, engineering and site clearance. So it looks like there are one, two, three and four. But you cannot simply say that is four performance obligation. You need to read further. Henny Manny and its competitors also provide such services separately. So it looks like one of the performance uh, obligation criteria for a good or service to be considered this thing is met. But we have to go and look further. That was for B. So if you look at the requirement that you have here, with reference to MFRS 15 revenue from contract with customers, discuss whether goods and services provided uh, in each of the above contracts in B and in C represent a single performance obligation. Does it represent a single performance obligation or is it multiple performance obligation? So but the question only asks you whether does it represent a single performance obligation or not and you need to discuss in the light of the MFRS 15 uh, which is looking at the criteria for whether the good or service is regarded as this thing. So the, we go for the first uh, part first, which is part B, looking at whether this is a single performance obligation or not. So we're going to check that, whether that is a single performance obligation. So we need to go and discuss whether the goods and services provided in A and in B separately, not to be considered together. B is a separate contract, C is a separate contract dealing with a different uh, business. So let's look at B. So before that, what you need to understand is that here are, there are different services being offered here. So if you look, supply of construction material, architectural service, engineering and site clearance. But this one is actually part of the so-called residential project, which is residential home, right? Home or um, housing project where you have all these together. The different services being performed under the contract, they are separately identifiable. Yes, you can say this is four separate uh, you know obligation but the customer cannot benefit from the service on its own so meaning that maybe this comes together the construction of material may also be done concurrently with the architectural service may also be done together uh, at the same time with the engineering and with the site clearance so it comes as a package so you cannot benefit from the service of uh, construction material supply of it without the architectural service. So therefore, they are considered separately identifiable, but the, the customer cannot benefit from the service. Look at the criteria here. The customer must be able, the customer, and the customer must be able to, we are talking about the customer. So the customer, which is our key, um, you know, um, parties that we are providing the service for, they should be able to benefit. Here, they cannot benefit. So because of that, the two criteria are not being met because only the second one is met, separately identifiable, but the first one is not being met. For that reason, what you can conclude is that according to MFRS 15, both criteria must be met, as I mentioned just now for a good or service to be considered this thing and as separate performance obligation. So when you say this thing, you are saying that there is some 
maybe there are multiple performance obligation su supply of construction material here it looks like four but it's not the case here because the customer cannot benefit from service on its uh, own separately therefore uh, any many which is the reporting entity should account for the supply of construction material architectural services engineering and site clearance services which for um, services being provided as just a single performance obligation the reason is because the criteria for the distinct goods and service are not being met so one is being met the other is not the mfrs says it has to be both not just one of it because the what you have here is the uh, word and not all and and all means differently right the second one fast solution fast solution is a software developer entered into a two-year contract so the contract is in two years time and where that contract within that 24 month period um, the customer uh, that you are not given the name there you're supposed to provide to the customer software license including so this is the service that you provide providing software license provide software license right including software out updates and technical support services so there are one two three things that you are provided so you need to check whether are these three uh, services that you are provided are they considered as one performance obligation or is it a separate uh, performance obligation or multiple performance obligation one or single performance obligation here you have a, uh, an important information here the software license which is one of it being provided would remain functional even if the updates software updates and the support the technical support services are discontinued even if you do not continue to have uh, taken the update to be uh, or to provide the updates or you do not continue to provide the technical support service to the customer the software license will still remain functional so you are to decide whether this is a separate performance obligation a single performance obligation or is it a separate performance obligation so here let us look at what we have here so you need to go and check what you have been given in the information transfer of software license so these are the one the thing that you gave to your customer you are for fast solution software updates and technical support services are distinct right why it is considered as distinct even though the software license is delivered earlier before the other services the you are informed here that it still remain functional even without the update or without the technical support even without the update even without the technical support that remains functional so if that is the case right even without the update without the technical support that was mentioned in the contract that remains functional if this is the case it met the criteria that it can be consider as separate or multiple performance obligation so in addition you are also informed the customer can benefit from each of the service services given either on their own or together with other services that are readily available so uh, they can how do we know this because it will still remain functional even without the update so it is considered as uh, the case where customer can benefit even without taking other services so you can just take the software license without the software update without the technical support so therefore both criteria for goods or service to be considered distinct are met here so the criteria are being met so as the entities promise to transfer good and service is Consider as separately identifiable from other service 
in of other goods in the contract and what is your conclusion of course you can guess what is the conclusion therefore the contract should not be accounted for as a single performance obligation and if that is the case it will have to be considered as multiple performance obligation maybe you may have po1 for a performance obligation one for the software license performance obligation two for the software updates and performance obligation three for the technical support service however of course you need to have more information to recognize the revenue you need to know what are the transaction price what are the standalone selling price okay that's it from me today we just focusing on the issue of whether it is a single versus multiple performance obligation thank you for watching and i'll see you when i will see you have a nice day